Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first ever f- proper episode of 2024. Um, I'm your host, Daniel, and once again for another year, I'm welcomed with Alex. Yes, COVID edition, Alex. Yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's a bit... Just found out this afternoon. You're a bit secondhand at the moment, but... Uh... I've been secondhand, thirdhand, mate. I've been I've copped everything this month. Anyway, <laughs> still still ready to go. Still, still, still surviving. Um, yeah, Josh. Ah, nice work, Tanner. I've just joined Nick Perkett's cart team. Well, congratulations and uh, all the best for the that's, year. Uh, that's exciting. That's, well, that's fairly uh, new, isn't it? Yeah, they only started late last year. I think. Uh, can we talk about Kostecki? Yeah, yeah. We will get into that. All right, we we have actually a plan. We we'll, uh, <laughs> um, we got to go through. So, in saying that, should we get should we get through uh, and start? Problem is with that comment. It says, uh, "Can we talk about Kostecki real quick?" I don't think that's going to be possible. No, we'll be here all day. We'll be here all day. <laughs> anyway, um, but I appreciate the likes and whatnot. Um, yeah, new team hopefully goes well. Yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, still exciting, though. Great opportunity for you. Um, so let's get into the podcast and all. Um, so we'll have a quick brief of what's different for 2024. Uh, we'll have a look at the calendar. So we've got a whopping 12 rounds of the year, for the year. Uh, I know it's incredible. We've got 24 races. Um, it's a lot. Oh, and it's going to be good. <laughs> I, I, I mean... Sorry, blanked out for a sec. Um, I was just like thinking, I'm like, why does it's so good that Supercars does a full year calendar versus mm-hmm. like IndyCar where it starts in March and ends in well, September. But they have more races though, don't they? I don't think so. Mm. Oh, but maybe. More rounds anyway. Well, because they're different because they do one race every round, like. Each round has one race, whereas Supercars got multiple. But we are missing out on a lot of tracks. But we will um, have a quick brief through. We did last year briefly. But uh, first off, we've got Bathurst, which is coming up. Uh, with the Superfest is actually starting this weekend, which is why we wanted to get this um, done tonight uh, so we can get ready for uh, all the action on Friday for the GT cars. Uh, and then we've got the Melbourne Super Sprint, a full, like a full month later uh, for the Grand Prix. Then we've got uh, New Zealand, it's finally back, uh, Torpor. Uh, and then we've got Perth, Darwin, Townsville. Uh, and then we've got our one and only Super Night in Sydney. Uh, and then we've got a cold Tasmanian Super Sprint. And then we've got Sandown and Bathurst for our two Enduros. And then we've got Gold Coast and Adelaide uh, rounding up the season. Very similar to last year. Um, yeah, we need... Well, at least, at least, yeah, 20 rounds. We need more than 12, that's for sure. Um, what do you think, Alex? What would you like to see on the calendar one day? One day? Well, I think, I know how I just said that it's good that they've got it from Feb to December, but it is pretty much, I think there's only one month of the year where there's two races, if that's not wrong. It's no more than two, at least. I think it's in so, July, I think. Yeah, Around and... There. um. I think besides that, it's not too bad. But, um, yeah, I remember when the schedule got released and we're like, yeah, there's just, why can't they just do more races? But I suppose that, um, you know, it's kind of dying down a little bit, unfortunately. So maybe they couldn't afford it or something. I don't know. But it'd be nice to go back to how it was like mid 2000s when there was races almost every fortnight or something. Mm. Yeah, it's a check. Because, well, I think 2014, we had around 38 races. But yeah, well. they did have a sp- lot, lot more sprint races, though. But still, 24, I feel like we're going to do more know. than that because we're missing out on Wington, Phillip Island, um, and heaps more. Plus, we don't even have really? the Bend this year either. But No, yeah, those three tracks are, are necessary. Hmm. Winton especially, I feel, because um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Victoria only will have... One race, which is the Grand Prix, isn't it? Oh, and Sandown. And, yeah, just two out of 12, though. Um, yeah. But let's be honest, they're not really... Especially with now the Formula 2 cars taking over the um, the pit garages at the Grand Prix, supercars are going to be less popular there. 
Yeah, I don't expect And they won't even have pit stops in their races. It'll just be four sprint races, I imagine. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be unrealistic if they do pits. Um, given that's now Grand Prix grid. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what well, I'm there you go. But, uh, uh, yeah, so total 24 races of the year. We, uh, eight 250k races. Uh, then we've got four 200 kilometer races and then four sprint rounds for the year. And uh, for practice, um, there's a little bit of a difference to practice this year. Uh, both Torpor, Perth, Darwin, Sydney, and Tassie will each have uh, not one singular 90 minute practice session, while we've got uh, Bat- uh, Bathurst 500 and Bathurst 1000 both have multiple 60 minute sessions. And the rest have thirty minute sessions. So um interesting. But uh I nothing think, crazy. Nothing but... crazy though, but um Yeah, nothing major. But one practice session. You now if you've been it in that session. I wonder how many they be... how many they get at the Grand Prix though? Oh uh, probably Let's see if I can find it. Probably That's only a couple. Isn't it? isn't it usually just one or two anyway? Yeah, I think you know what? I think maybe even one. Well, yeah, they'll probably that's have two this year, but I think last year they had one and then they just went straight into quality. Mm. I miss uh, Ambrose and Greg Murphy era too. That was such a good time. Hey, Jordan just asked us a question. Uh, will you be going live while races are on? That is in in the cards. The idea it's in the idea box. Yeah. Just work, whether or not we can actually do it for free or not. Mm. Um, for starters, I probably oh, no. Hang on, that's next week. No, I won't be available on the Sunday because that's the no. Hang on, and anyway, when the first race on one of the days, I'll be free. I won't be free. So <laughs> one or the other. You see what I mean? Like it's already a mess. But well, um, even if no, it'll be, be nice. Um, yeah, it'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, but obviously but, we can't. Um, Show the races due to copyright. Yeah. Um, but we can talk about how. Uh... Oh no, Jack Smith's gone now. Damn. I was going to say when someone crashes, but we're Jack only, Smith's gone. Only less than ten minutes in. Don't make me cry. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heartbroken. He's the goat. The goat. Um. Now, so yeah, that we do plan on. We're hoping to do some something like that, but we'll see how we go throughout the year. Um, I want to do MotoGP ones. Yeah, you, I'll let you cover anything MotoGP. Um, Cause they're going to be lit this year. I'm so yeah, excited for that. I'm looking forward to that. Um, right, let's get into the grid for 2024. So, starting off with Bl- uh, Blanchard Racing, uh, they're now a two-car team. We've got in car number three, Aaron Love, his first full-time uh, gig. And car number seven, not so rookie James Courtney, who also have oh, uh, Jack Perkins backing him for uh, the Enduros, which is exciting. Complete difference in uh, team there. It's like when uh, Matt Payne joined uh, Penrite with Reynolds next to him. Oh, definitely. But uh, yeah, experience and uh, youth in the same garage, which would be good. But I would love Eric. It'll be all right because the way he drove at Bathurst last year was insane. Like I couldn't get over how close we were getting to those walls. Yeah, he did. Uh, especially he, at the top of the mountain. Run. He'll fit in just fine, I believe. I have faith. He's a far, we've got a lot of fast young blokes th- this year, um, which I'm look, very looking forward to. Um, plus, in saying about Blanchard Racing, their cars look fantastic. Very similar to how those cars, well, James Courtney's Tickford looked, um, although this looks a little nicer. And Aaron Love's car is very similar to Todd's, but looks very good. And I'm excited to see because uh, the way they're doing pits this year, like the grid or um, the pit order, um, it's yeah. going to be changed every round. So they now they're a two car team. Two two car. What happened there? Two car team. They actually have a good chance to be a lot higher up um, this year, which is cool. Yeah, agreed. I feel like. Um... Blanchard just emailed Tickford and say, "Hey, can you just give me the design of James's car from last year, and then just print it out themselves? Yeah, because it looks identical. But um, that doesn't say it's bad. I just yeah. hope they keep the black wheels that they uh, put on in the uh, 
when we in the livery reveal. I hope so. I can't wait for the next race either, um, Jordan. It's going to be cool. But I'm looking forward to the 12 hour. 12 hour will be mega. Um, Brad Jones yeah, Racing. It's good though with that Valentino Rossi though. <laughs> nah. I miss him. Plus the car looked pretty nice too. It did. Um, Blanchard Racing Part 1. Not Blanchard Racing. B- Brad Jones Racing Part 1. Uh, in Car 12, yep. we've got Jackson Evans uh, in the Smith Mobile. And Car 96 is McCauley Jones, who will have Jordan Boy's partner once again. Um, both of those cars look exactly the same as last year. Um, expect probably... For Macca, probably similar results. Uh, for Evans, though, I think he can do almost as well as Heimgartner. Uh, see how we go. Um, he's definitely a speedy driver, that's for sure. Yeah, agreed. I think that they'll be pretty similar to last year, though, because they've got the same team. Well, besides Jackson Evans. But, um, yeah. Hey, I'll be back one sec. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, Jordan. James Courtney will finish in the top 10 championship. That's bold. That's interesting. I actually do hope that. Um, and if he has a good car, I don't don't see why not. Um, everyone joining, welcome. Hope you're all having a good evening. Um, we're just talking on our podcast. If Seth, welcome. How are you going? Appreciate the like, mate. Uh, this is our first podcast of 2024. Um, th- thanks for the like, Tanner. Uh, if you do miss the stream, if you're not here for the whole thing, uh, we'll be uploading it to YouTube this week and next week as well. Um, Alex has vanished. So, Matt Stone Racing. Um, uh, we've got, in car number 10, we've got Nick Perkat, and car number 4 is Cameron Hill. Nick Perkat, I'm excited to see what he can do with the Camaro. Of course, he didn't. he had a bit of a rough year um last year with Walkinshaw, but um I'm hoping he can do better. Plus he has uh his car looks very nice. He has Bendix um supporting him this year and Cameron Hill. I'm excited to see what he can do in his second season in supercars. Uh the tire power car looks very good. Looks very similar to uh to um Shane Gisbergen's car all those years ago. So uh now I'm looking forward to seeing how they go. Newlon Racing, we've got uh, in car 23, Tim Slade, and car 31, James Golding. Um, very excited to see um, how they go. Um, they had a, they had a good start last year, but unfortunately they sort of fell back as the year went on. Um, but hopefully they can have a bit more of a consistent year this year round. Um, so, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Team 18, this is the one I'm very excited for. Um Car 20, David Reynolds, and car 18, Mark Winterbottom. Uh, I'm very excited to see what this got with what these what the squad can do this year. Um, similar to uh, Nick Perker, I reckon David would do really well in the Camaro um, after having a rough season last year. But in saying that, uh, he did very well in the last two rounds by winning uh, Gold Coast, so that was neat. Um, now, Team 18 is very clever. They actually, during the testing, they actually swapped their cars around. Like, they swapped drivers. Um, so, Davey uh, hopped into Mark's car and vice versa um, to get a full idea of what's going on, which is a fantastic idea. Jabby, welcome. Happy you having a good night. Um, I'm excited to see what they do. Plus, their cars look fantastic as well. I love the uh, black and yellow for Mark and the tradie app outfit for Dave, but that looks very similar to Declan Fraser's car from last year. I swear, I think Alex was onto something with um, Tickford just giving away their liveries. <laughs> um, Grove Racing, another one I'm very excited for. An all-out all uh, Kiwi team. Um, Matt Payne, of course, he won Adelaide last year. Uh, f- beautiful drive last year. It was incredible. Um yeah, I'm excited to see what Grove Racing does. Um, it's an all-Kiwi team. Uh, they were getting quite consistently fast towards the back end of last year. And we saw how good... Plus, Richie, Bathurst winner for last year too. So that's also another big thing. And Richie Stanaway's mindset is so much better now um, than, than it used to. Um, so I'm excited to see what this new Richie can do. 
Uh, next up, we've got Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. Uh, car number two, we have rookie sensation Ryan Wood. And uh, in car 25, we've got Chaz Mozzie. Now I'm excited to see what Ryan can do. The cars look fantastic. He's got truck assist uh, backing him this year. And then uh, Optus One backing... Um, Oh, Optus one. Optus backing Chaz this year again. The cars look fantastic. Um, I, I, my personal favourite is actually Ryan Woods. Uh, and we've got also Coulthard and Holdsworth Enduro uh, teaming up with them once again. So that'll be very cool. And welcome back, Alex. Thanks, mate. Fire out. Um, yeah, what are we up to? Ryan Wood, I heard. Yeah, sorry. I, I got distracted a little bit. So. That's <laughs> um, fine. Uh, kick on. But uh, next up is uh, Dick Johnson Racing uh, with car 11, Anton Di Pasquale, and car 17, Will Davison. Hopefully they have a bit of a better year this year. Um, they had a rough, rough season last year, unfortunately. But what I'm very excited for is the livery. No, I'm kidding. Uh, what I'm excited for is the co- <laughs> I had you, though, didn't I? Uh, what I'm excited yeah, for is the co-drivers. <laughs> is the co-drivers. We've got Tony Delberto uh, with Anton once again. But uh, with Will Davison, we've got young Kai Allen, who is the Super 2 champ from last year, which I'm very excited yeah. to see. Yeah, I think he'll fit in perfectly. And you said off air that, you know, it might be a segue to what's coming maybe next year. Yeah, if Will's, have... you know, want to retire soon, you know, who knows? I have a theory. Um, if, yeah, so for people who obviously weren't there in that convo that we had, because there's only two of us. Um, I reckon, I highly suspect, uh, if Will doesn't perform this year, or if Will decides to depart, then Kai Allen is in the prime position for a 2025 seat. And in my opinion, he really deserves it. Um, I would love to see him in the main game. Um, he did very well in... He almost won Super 3. He, he won Super 2 in the last round. And I'm excited, to, and he's obviously trying to win again this year. He's carrying the number one in the Super 2. So I'm very excited to see what that young bloke can do. Another team I'm excited for this year is Tickford Racing. Now, what excites me the most is now they've gone from a four-car to a two-car team. Um, yep. They've got a new team principal now. I can't remember his name, but um, he used to work in footy, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm sure... Uh, What's his name? Can actually tell us about uh, who, who's uh, his his uncle's boss. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, Jordan. I think it was Jordan. I'm pretty sure. No, it wasn't. was it? I can't remember. I'm trying to. I'm trying to look. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Jordan. it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. yeah. Sorry, Jordan. <clears throat> I didn't forget you. I was just trying to remember who said it. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. Uh, this year, Cam um, had a well. Actually, both Cam and Tom had a fantastic year this year, uh, last year, um, especially towards the back end. From Bend onwards, they're fairly strong. Um, so everyone kind of was after that. Mm. And Tom got a uh, good couple podiums too, both Bend and Adelaide. So that was pretty cool. Um, so I'm very excited to see what they do. Of course, I think we've got Moffat teaming up with Waters again, and Tyler Everingham will be. Partnering up with uh, Thomas Randall, which you, you're not you're you're not um, so sure of, but I have faith. I have faith. No, I just don't think he's done anything good enough to worth that. Especially if Thomas Randall's going to be higher up this year than we you know than what we expect. Mm. So I don't know. I just don't feel that's the right type of guy to have. <clears throat> In the seat, to be brutally honest, like I feel like we've got someone with a higher tier. I mean, Brody Kostecki might be free, but um, who knows? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, entirely every didn't even do anything after that Nissan drive he had in Super 2, like, what, four or five years ago? Mm. Um, what's he done since? Where have you seen in racing? So, I don't know. I think, I, I can't remember what he's done, but he, I, I don't know if it's Trans Am or not. I could be wrong. But, um,. Who knows? He might surprise us. Um, he was, of course, Declan Fraser's co-driver last year. Um, oh, Jordan. I think Davison will co-drive with Waters next year. That's an interesting... Do you know something that we don't... I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but seriously, that'll be an interesting... Um, 
it'd be cool to see Dave though go back to Tickford. Um, see how we go. But uh, part two of Brad Jones Racing, uh, car eight, we've got Andre Heimgartner, and car fourteen, Bryce Forward. And uh, teaming up with Andre, we've got De- Declan Fraser, and then uh, Robotham is teaming up with Forward this year. I'm excited to see what they can do, uh, especially Andre. Uh, Bryce, probably ex- I'm expecting something similar, uh, maybe just outside the 10, see how we go. But Andre, I hope he gets consistently uh, just below top fives. No, he gets top fives, or just below that, if that makes sense. I hope he can get a win. Yeah, I feel like he's due. He had a fair few podiums last year. Um, he was really good in the bend as well. Mm. I think that, yeah, I think he's due. Um, so hopefully he can, yeah, get to, I think he finished second is best result, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so just one more step to the top. And out of the Brad Jones drivers, let's be honest, he's probably the only, hot, the only hope. I mean, he, he led the way last year. Everyone, yeah, no dominated. one else was no, nowhere near him. Um, no. Jordan. No, that's just my opinion. Mm, sure, sure. Triple <laughs> <laughs> um, Eight is one that's exciting. Car 87, we've got Will Brown. And Car 88, Brock Feeney. Um, now, this, this is going to be an interesting uh, duo. Uh, uh, no worries, Tanner. Um, appreciate uh, joining in. Hope you have a good night, man. All the best with that carding as well. That, that's very exciting. I have to, I have to uh, check you out. Um, yeah, exciting duo this year. We've got Scott Pye and Jamie Winkup co-driving. Um, I reckon we're going to go back to potentially a Triple Eight dominated year. See how we go. Um, but the way Erebus has fallen, I won't be surprised if that's ha- if that what if that happens. Connor, no, I totally welcome. agree. Totally agree. Um, I but, think that they're going to just smash everybody, to be brutally honest. Hmm. And, yeah, those co-drivers are elite. So, yeah, I don't think they're going to have any problems unless they get in each other's way. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. And But what I'm looking forward to, though, now that kostek has gone, um, well, it all depends on Erebus, but I'm looking forward to... A, a Brock Feeney versus Will Brown championship battle. That'll be very cool to see um, this year. Yeah. Yep. 100% agree. But, uh, we've also got um, AAA announced their co-drive uh, wild card for the year. Uh, we've yes. got uh, the super cheap autos back in action with the AAA. Uh, we've got Craig Lowndes and this time Cooper Murray because um, Zane Goddard actually announced recently that he'll be stepping back from racing. I'm not sure if it's full time or not. Uh, we'll see how we go. Yeah, but... it's all together. I heard it's all together. Mm. But uh, it does open the door for Cooper Murray to to show what he's got. Of course, he he had a good rookie season last year in Super Two with Eccleston Motorsport, managed to finish fourth in the points, uh, and he got a couple podiums or a win. I can't remember now, but um, uh, he's a brilliant he's up and comer. Yeah, a couple of wins. He dominated in Porsches. I'm surprised he left there, to be honest, because he could have had a worldwide career in mm. Porsches careers. Um, so, yeah, he still did pretty good. I think he actually got Polar's first race or something, like, ridiculous. Yeah. But think... in, uh, in Newcastle. Yeah, no, he was pretty speedy. And yeah. plus he also gets a solo world card round this year too, so it'll probably be similar to Zane last year, so maybe Darwin again. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do this year in the Gen 3 car. And um, the talk of the town, Erebus Motorsport, not Coca-Cola anymore. Um, that all went to crap. So car nine, we've got Jack LeBrock. Uh, and car question mark, <laughs> we've got none other than Jack Smith. No, I'm kidding. We've no. got Todd Hazelwood. Uh, Todd Hazelwood has replaced Bro- Brody Kostecki if you uh, have been living under a rock. So let's let's talk to, let's talk about Erebus now. If you're still watching, um, we can we're talking about Erebus. <laughs> so yes, yeah, yeah. so um, uh, since we last spoke, because we've made a little video on YouTube about this. 
Since then, they have lost four four big sponsors, I think, um, including the Army. Yeah. Which is really big. Um, so they've gone downhill. And in testing, Todd Hazelwood ran car number one, um, which is a bit cheeky. Um, I said it on my lives a couple of times. It was... A, <sighs> It was basically like sh- it. showing off uh, Barry was showing off his ego. I don't like it. No, I don't like it at all. It's not right. Hazelwood did not win a championship, so why is number one next to his name? It felt quite sour. I must admit, because um, you're right. Brody did win that fair and square. It's his number wherever he goes. If it's if he gets another drive in supercars, he owns that number one for the year. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I won't be surprised if. Uh, by the way, John is thinking Todd will be in car thirty-five. That's that's I, I prefer that because I do like that number. Um, I think he'll be ninety-nine. I think he. You know, well, th- now that you say that, Barry Ryan hinted um, that they'll be doing something different. Um, so it could either be triple nine, which is what uh, Job Stewart uses mm-hmm. in the Super Twos, or they could do a cheeky thing. It'll be one ninety-nine to include the one. I reckon. But they also, uh, yeah, or ninety or something. I don't know. Or ninety, yeah. Um, or ninety-eight, or or thirty-six. Even I hinted at that. I I, I um, hinted at that. Um, because that's where that come from? Oh, that's when they won in the twelve hour, all those years back. Um, ah. Uh, so maybe that, but I doubt that. No. Zero nine, maybe. But I reckon one. Yeah, nine, I was nine. about to say that too, but that's a bit too close to number nine. Yeah, or nine nine one. No, it's not a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I, I maybe I'm... the thing Barry Ryan was saying that's different. It was number one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, being a bit of a yeah, a bit of a show off. Yeah, knowing Barry, that's probably he will he'll find a way to put that one on the car. It can't though. Yeah, I know. It, it's yeah, it's it, it's unfortunate. It because it, yeah. I, I, we were so close to getting one car number one back on the car because it's been years since we've seen it. Um, many, many years, yeah. So we'll see what happens. But I, I reckon thirty five ninety nine or one ninety nine. That's my guess. That's those, I'm locking them in. But it's just messy. It's just messy, and it's kind of. I dis- just, disgusting. just wonder if they get a sponsor. Oh, they uh, do. That's my biggest that's, thing. Will they even get a sponsor now? Because who's going to want to promote this crap? Well, they've got exactly that's that's actually, and the thing is, they're still they still it's they haven't said anything yet about it. Maybe they'll call Pepsi. Oh me, um, yeah. Because <laughs> Pepsi's not as good as Coke. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Swapping sides. Ben, welcome. Hope you're having a good night. Um, yeah. So let's. With all that Erebus drama getting in there, let's uh, get into some predictions for 2024. So, yes. Alex, you want to kick us off? Yes, I've written down a, f- a few different categories. So we're going to put down um, the six of them. Uh, we'll go through one by one. I think we'll not do the top one I've got on the list, though. Um, let's do who will get their first win this year. Hmm. So it can't be a. You know, Will Brown, uh, Brock Feeney, Cam Waters, Chad. It can't be anyone that's won. I I think it's under home guard. Yeah? Yeah. Although he's already won one before. He won... Never uh, mind. He won at the bend all those years ago. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, he did too. uh, Never mind. I've got to give a new answer. 2020, I think. Jack Smith. I have to have a new answer. (laughs) Jordan said Jack Smith. There we go. He's going to be the champion. He's actually going to... He's not even going to compete, and he's going to win. Um, yeah, no, I reckon if Thomas Randall, that's who I want to. That, yeah, I agree. I, I want him. He, I, he's the one I want to win the most. Who hasn't? Yet. Yeah, yeah, I um, agree. But right. if Erebus has a good car, Todd or Jack? Be Todd. Although Jack's already well, Jack's won. already won. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be Todd. Todd could have, but we'll see how we go. But yeah, definitely Thomas Randall. All right, next. Uh, uh, okay, let's do. You go to the other side. The worst team slash driver. Um, probably the second half that 
uh, Brad Jones Racing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jones. Yeah, Jones and Evans. Um, it's Evans might be all right, but the car isn't the greatest. But they, you know, yeah. they haven't had a great run. But in terms of worst driver, um, no, I'm going to have to say Jones, to be honest. Yeah. Nothing, nothing against him. There's just so many fast blokes in this series. Yeah, and I think the, the couple of rookies that we got in are probably better than him already. Mm, definitely. Uh, next one is... I'll go similar thing. Worst and best race. Now, this is just based on which one do you reckon will have the most value for money, most entertainment? Um... Because let's be honest, we'd always like to say Bathurst, but last year Bathurst was a snooze fest. Oh, I really so did not it like can't, that. It was not good at all. Um, I want to say, and Newcastle is gone now, so that's a different answer. Um, <clears throat> I kind of think the New Zealand round might be the best one, just because it's new. Yeah, I'm looking, and, for, I'm looking uh, forward to that. Yeah, and I, and I think the cars would be a real handful. Around, uh, around Topo. How do you pronounce it? Topo? Torpo, I think. Or Topo. Or us, Torpo. Us Aussies would never get yeah. to sound good as the Kiwis. I'm going to say Torpo. I'm going to lock that in. Um... Torpo. All right, cool. <laughs> and I think the worst race will be uh, probably Sydney. Yeah. I don't, I don't like Eastern Creek, to be honest. Nah, fair enough. Um, probably... <sighs> See, Gold Coast was quite exciting last year. So I, I reckon we might see another good race at Gold Coast. Because um, I, I agree with you with the Torpor, but it's also in the unknown as well. So who knows if it will guaranteed be good. Tasmania, they're literally just doing two 60-minute races in cold winter. Um, so I don't think that'll be incredible. But So I'm going to lock in Gold Coast for my for the best. And yep. probably for the worst, I'll probably maybe. Uh, uh, I don't want to say Melbourne, but because they might be exciting, but maybe just because of the fact that um, I forgot about them. I'm gonna pro- yeah, I'll probably say um, probably Melbourne. I reckon. Yeah, because they got no pit stops now. Nah, so it's not. There's not really a massive dynamic. What's gonna there. happen if someone has a fire <laughs> again? <laughs> pit lane's gone. Just pull over. All right, what else have we pub? done? Done. One, two, three. Okay. The next one is the best enduro team combo, or driver combo. Now, obviously, we don't know all of them, I don't think. Um, so, uh, from just the ones that we know so them. far, and I'm pretty sure both of our answers are going to be AAA related. Yeah, I've got, well, I've got one for them, one for someone else. So, I'll let you okay. go first and then uh, compare notes. Uh, to be honest, I don't think I can go past Brock and Jamie. Yeah. No, yeah. What's yours? What's your other team? Uh, I'm very so, curious. Well, obviously both Triple Eight because I'm very excited to see what Scott Pye can do in the Triple Eight Cup. But yeah, they were um, Feeney and Wink Up were just super strong in the Enduros. They just had no luck at Bathurst because of Wink Up. He just has a curse there for some reason. My other team was Cameron Waters and James Moffat. They did very. They had a lot of potential um, last couple of years, but last year they just had bad luck by having like their car damaged because of a flying wheel. So we never got to see what they could do. But I reckon sure. if they've got a good car, they will be um, a challenger for Triple Eight. But like you said, I have to agree with you. I don't think we can beat Feeney and Wink Up. It's it's a dangerous duo. Very. Very much. Also, uh, before we continue, Jordan, I think Grove will have a special livery in New Zealand. That would be very cool. Um, given that makes sense. That team is all New Zealand yeah, now. They're the only Kiwi t- Kiwi team. They should just run the flag or all blacks on the side, like uh, Chris Pith used to run. Mm. No, or not. just rename the team New Zealand for the week. <laughs> yeah. Fast Kiwis, because that's what they are. <laughs> they're dangerous. Fa- yeah, dangerous they, they're they're going to be good. They're going to be good. And that kind of leads me to the next segue, um, which is the biggest shock of, like, who's going to be the biggest shock of the year in terms of performance or... Well, we've already had the biggest shock before the season began. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, on the the road, man. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, I reckon Grove... 
I, I, yeah, I, actually, I'm I, I reckon just, growth. I reckon um, given how they performed uh, the last couple of rounds of the year last year, given how Stanaway won Bathurst with Shane and then Payne literally won the last race of the year, I'm very excited for them. I reckon they'll be very, very yeah. quick for sure. <laughs> yep, agreed. I also think Chaz Moster is going to come back to his usual self. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I think we need him to come back to normal because the last two years he's just disappeared. No, yeah. he deserves uh, a So we car. need him back. Yeah, 100%. And speaking of good cars, this leads to the last uh, section, which is who's going to be the champ. Now, I already sort of know who you're going to pick. You do? <laughs> I think I do. Um, okay. Who is? Who do you think? Brock Feeney? Yeah. 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 Because I, I just I, think that I just think that now that Shane's gone, uh, you'd be out of the way a bit more. The only person I can see getting in his way is his teammate. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, also, um, Alex the Great, welcome. Hi, welcome. Uh, hi, reckons Cam Waters. Jordan reckons Waters as well, but I think there's a little bit of a team bias. But no, I'm kidding. No, I, I actually, I actually look, really I, hope I, that happens. I. Look, I won't be mad if it's if it's Cam Waters, but Cam Waters needs like four rounds of consistency first. So maybe by the time we get to what Darwin or something, I'll be like, all right, maybe. But and obviously with the discrepancy of cars last year being so different, I think uh, we can't really judge what we saw last year. We have to see pretty much after Bathurst. Well, everyone's got. And uh, he's usually really good around Bathurst, so... Yeah, yeah, I won't be mad if it's not Brock Freeney. I just think that it's his time. Well, I reckon... Will, uh, Brown, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Brock Brown. is in a good position with Brody yep. step, like leaving. He's in a good position um, to do well this year. And I reckon if Waters does have a good car... See, last year, the Mustangs were pretty much a write-off until the end. Yeah. So if they have a better car Still this year, better. don't... You know, don't um, forget about That's Waters. what I'm saying. He'll be dangerous. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, hey, what's your answer? I reckon either... Uh, I, no, I reckon Brock Feeney. I'm going to... Like I said, yeah. he, he, he actually got... He was actually... Yeah, yeah. He was very strong uh, the second half of the year last year. Um, so I'm very excited to see what he can do. Hey, everyone. Future Daniel here. Um, just letting you all know that this is the end of our pre-season preview. Uh, this podcast was actually streamed live on TikTok and it is going to be cut in two parts. So next week we'll have the Bathurst preview uh, for the round one. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out all our socials and we'll catch you all soon. Bye for now.